All right. Let's see this. Okay. Uh, hey. <laughs> Hello, Gaia. How are you doing? Okay. Let's see. I'm actually doing some testing right now. This is the very first time I'm doing a live stream, so <laughs> bear with me. Hmm, what happens if I do this? Okay. <laughs> no worries, no worries. I'm just doing something very quick. Going to put some music. I think I can. I don't think uh, Twitch is going to ban me for putting some community midis. <laughs> Hey Gaia, can you can you send me a message on Twitch telling me if everything is sounding fine? <laughs> Sorry about that. So, how's the sound? Hey, what's up, Jackson? R. <laughs> Can you hear me now better, guy? I put on some music, try to lower the volume, trying to configure it so it doesn't sound too low and too uh, annoying. <laughs> It would be funny if Twitch banned me just for using Doom Midis. <laughs> All right, it's nice to hear. I'm not actually sure how's the latency, since uh, well, my internet isn't really fast, so the ping might be a little bit uh, high.
<laughs> yeah. Actually, I was having some trouble with the internet today because there was some blackouts. Yesterday, there was a blackout during the night. Tomorrow, uh, today in the morning, there was also another blackout. And some hours ago, there was also another blackout. So, yeah. Internet can be a little bit uh, annoying here. Okay, I actually think uh, think everything is fine. So I'm just going to wait a little bit more for more people to join, if they do. <laughs> I'm not even sure how can how can I see how many people are watching right now. Let me see. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't be the first time. At least we, at least I have you. <laughs> oh yeah. I think if I do uh, another stream, I'm probably going to try one of those uh, Zoom screens. I don't know what's the official name. Like one of those little screens uh, a lot of streamers put before actually starting the live stream. Those that say live stream starting soon. Stuff like that. Well, that is if I do another stream. <laughs> <laughs> you should stream some of your season wars, Gaia. <laughs> that would be fun. Kind of like the last time when we did our our tournament. It would be a nice idea. Heck, we probably could do a stream, you and I, <laughs> someday. <laughs> I think my PC would explode if I was to stream Total Chaos. That would be crazy. <laughs> Man, this mini is mini is really good. <laughs> until the power goes out. Oh, 
Well, I actually think we have more f uh, more viewers. Hello, in Morpher. What's it going? <laughs> and General Rosterock. Thanks for following, mate. Hope you guys are enjoying the black stream <laughs> while we wait. Sorry about that. Black stream buggers. That's going to be the title of the stream. <laughs> Your wish came true. All right, I think a few more minutes and I'm going to start reading some of the articles from our latest issue. Hopefully my Broken English isn't going to sound so bad, so I hope that's not an issue with you guys. By the way, if you already don't know this, I don't actually speak English. Not natively. <laughs> <laughs> my English is probably going to be some of the best you can get in a school in my country. Seriously, English here is really bad. Hey, what's up, Neermorph? Welcome to the party. Thanks for the raid. That's awesome. <laughs> Sixty-four is being represented here. We now can have any of the sixty-four questions directly asked to our lore of the Doom Nintendo. <laughs> Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> uh. <laughs> We're going to conquer the war guy, you and I. I'm actually realizing that this issue is 103 pages long. <laughs> That's going to be a lot of reading. Well, of course, there's a lot of pictures, so it should be 
Uh, I will, uh, should be quick. Meanwhile, we can take a moment to appreciate this lovely mancus, or manculi. He's quite handsome, the fellow. Yeah, probably not. But I hope I can get to at least half of it. You know, the good stuff. <laughs> Sorry about that, Gaia. In my defense, you were the last one to send me your comment. <laughs> I think I might have uh, probably sent it to the wrong folder. And as usual, I got it mixed up. But I think we can fix that. <laughs> Sorry, man. Going to give you a kiss. Don't be, don't be, don't be sad. Oh, that's actually a very, very interesting idea. Gaia has quite the history to, <laughs> to tell. Not only has he been, has he been a, mo a mother for quite some time now, he's actually one of the leaders of the Latino Doom community. So yeah, Gaia does deserve an article. I mean, he even has a Doom Wiki article now. He's famous. Hey, what's up, General? Welcome to the stream. It's a nice old sphere. <laughs> you don't have to be ashamed of your past, guy. It's part of our history, man. It's a good history. Golden history. Good old days. <laughs> hey Senna, welcome. It's quite the comment there. <laughs> huh? Oh man, that's a very some very old old midi in morph. Early 2000s. Not a lot of people actually managed to conserve or preserve their their early works. That's why you always have to keep track of things. And that's why I love Excel. <laughs> Yeah, I always think it's a great idea to to save our work, mostly because we can see how we evolve, how we change in time. Like uh, the first issue of the war scene is absolutely ugly compared to the more recent issues, but I still preserved it, and you can still actually find it in our website and on Doom War, because I I like the little piece of history, and it's quite nostalgic to this point. I mean, two years already. That's quite a it's quite a stretch. Didn't I, I, I didn't actually imagine to get this far. <laughs> I'm very happy for it. Very, very happy. <laughs> yeah. It does look like a college uh, project. <laughs> 
If it was, I mean, I will, I will get an A, a B plus at least. <laughs> yeah. Always important to remember that what you think is all in garbage, plenty of other people will still like. Yeah, I think I agree with. I think I agree with that. Like uh, how I like to play a lot of '90s words. Most people will think that they are pretty garbage, but I still think they are fun. It's probably more of a testament how good them is rather than the what. But still, <laughs> I will use the was in if they ask me in college or school. Well, if I was in school, it's actually a pretty damn nice project by now. I mean, it's not professional in the sense that it doesn't, you know, it's not for se for sale. But the whole quality work and the way we do the editing, it's pretty damn professional to me. <laughs> okay, so I think we're ready to go. I was actually wondering if there's any way to put the chat permanently on the stream, but the uh, but it always uh, minimizes. I think I should be able to do it. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Yeah, this should work. Okay, so, what's up people, and welcome to all of you. <laughs> so, uh, we're actually doing my very first live stream today. It's going to be just a little short thing. Well, depends how much I, I took my time. Uh, we're going to be reading the issue number 18 of the Wazin. This is our second year anniversary issue. Technically, it was supposed to come some three months ago, <laughs> but we had some issues that do well. You know, real life and stuff like that. But we still did it, and the result is here. It's 103 pages long, and it's fantastic. I love it. There's a lot of new articles here. There's a lot of really cool stuff, some nice interviews. We have a lot of what's, like, seriously a lot. Unfortunately, due to the delays, it's always going to be a little bit outdated regarding some of the new WOTs or maps that have been recently released, but uh, we hope to fix that in the future. And this, uh, the cover from this issue was actually made by Format, our Russian designer. He's a very cool dude. He does some fantastic work. I don't think he's watching us right now due to time zone limits, but hopefully I'll be having this uh, screen saved. I think it does. Yeah, I think it should do. So, let's start. Okay. <laughs> you guys are watching my test bar. <laughs> don't do that. I feel exposed. Okay. So we will find where you save the anime girls, unless 
Never. <laughs> Going to hide this forever. So, let's get with the introduction. I'm going to <laughs> test out my reading skills. So, what are three months of delay when you have something as cool as the Wazi? Well, wait is over, everyone. And now we finally bring you the best of the best in the magnificent hellish world of Doom. This particular edition brings you a thick plethora of articles that you will surely find interesting and fun to read. And, of course, the usual selection of what recommendations are always a good place to find something to play in your Doom days. Especially nowadays. While time has gotten quite tight due to real life and the fact that now, with the end of the global shutdowns around the world, everyone's going back to work and boost life is becoming more common, this magazine is run by passion and blood. It is not for pay or exclusive, it is meant as a gift to the community and will always be. And I want you to know that, even after delays, there wasn't a single day I didn't wish for the godlike ability to finish it all in a single day. But, as reality goes, this magazine is no longer a one-man job. It's a community effort that deserves both the patience and care to be designed to be the ultimate fine man free e-sign. While we were, we were out, other things have also happened around. I've done some other side projects. If you're a fantasy or tabletop RPG nerd, you might enjoy some of this. But if you just want to focus on the, gl on the glory of Doom, don't worry. Not going anywhere. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty happy contribu uh, contributing to this community at large in any shape or form as I can. One of those little contributions is the recently released Wildcast. Technically, it was released like two weeks ago, but yeah. <laughs> Our own Doom Master was in podcast, where we'll be discussing a great variety of Doom topics with the different personalities across the community. I do hope to bring you some quality audio content to listen to, and I'd be damn happy, happy if I can make it work successfully. Thanks to all our patient readers and all our even more patient contributors. I know you guys have been waiting to see your submissions after all these months, and I hope you guys enjoy to see your articles come to life now thanks to the awesome efforts of our was in Wizards. I hope you guys enjoyed this issue, and I wish you to see your comments and support. Endless, Editor-in-Chief. Ain't that a really cool title. <laughs> So this was a little introduction I, I always do for the issues. This time this issue was like, uh, it took some rewriting and tweaking because as I finish an article, time passed on, so we got we gotta recheck stuff, we gotta update some things and some other things we had to just move on with it. As for the contact, content, we have the 2072 part 2 article, which is a story created by the Evil Ring. This is the sequel, and it came like the original came like a one year ago, I think. We also have Console Doom Article Chronicles, Xbox. This is the series of Console Doom created by Roblox. Pretty cool articles if you really like uh, Doom stuff on console. We got a very special article, Sansara Reincarnation which was done by the Samsara team, a team of really patient mothers that I absolutely love. They've been very supportive. Of they've been doing some really nice job with us. We also have Q2 stuff, which is like a little recommendation of mods for uh, that I use Quake 2. Uh, the community roundup. The community roundup was going to be a um, roundup that I was, going, uh, was planning to do every week, more or less. But that really wasn't possible with how we take so ta so much time to make the other <laughs> scenes. So yeah, we have to leave that up. The Encyclopedia from Hell is an article about the Doom Wiki. It's pretty damn awesome. And of course, there's the Wallace in Anniversary uh, little feature. Hell to Pay and Perdition's Gates, an incredible feature analyzing and reviewing the two um, famous commercial watts for Doom. And the what corners we have Vigo, Worldly, Blackness. This was once done by KM Sexy, KM Sexy, or KM Sexy. Some of those. Combat Shock Two. We have Being Revival. That was done by me. No, yeah, uh, yeah, that was my be. We have Altar of Evil. Doom to the Void E. Doom Lands. One Hundred Lives. Doom Sixty Four Reloaded. You can guess who did this. <laughs> and we have Curtain Sister, which was the master recommendation of this issue. And we of course has uh, new stuff, the new stuff guide, community art gallery, and the pictures gallery. 
came in sexy is what I would like to say. Yeah, that's how I pronounced it. I I we know I've been always pronouncing it like that. But I think the name comes from a French band, so there's probably some French in the pronunciation. Or maybe not, who knows? Okay. So let's start with the very first article. <laughs> Did this thing. It's fucking awesome. So 2017 part two by the evil dream. Little recap. As time in 2017 to part one on no laptop my mom had, I found a copy of Doom and some of what files dating back to 2020 for the most recent. After figuring out how to run them, I discovered a whole community behind it, still existing to this very day. One of them was one of my mom's long lost teammates. <laughs> he offered me to take the position she, she held 50 years ago as a writer for an online magazine dedicated to those who kept the community alive. As I hide the point of view of a newcomer coming straight from 2020, he asked me to write an article for its 15th anniversary. I think that's, uh, yeah. And here it is. It's actually the second anniversary, so this goes pretty well. A quick chronology. If you came from 2020 or 2001 for the matter, that won't change much, or two, uh, 2022, you'll need a bit of context to understand why the community is like it is now. I therefore decided to make this guy introduction about the 50 year gap any visitor for 2020 had to cross. Lots of things happened, life lasting friendships were formed, new members were welcome, runners broke new records, mappers, mappers shined by their talent, some drifted away, some stayed, some had lives were and were celebrated, their names forever written in the minds and heart lives of those who were to see them. As life went on for everyone, well, it seemed like something was needed to unite them all. Really like that paragraph. It's really good. Really, really enjoyed that way it is uh, narrated. Around 2025, the first national federations appeared. Yeah, national federations. English poggers. <laughs> uh, I hope that's a compliment. <laughs> if you guys think my uh, pronunciation is a little bit bad, I can make it. Uh, I can stop a little bit. So let's follow. Around 2025, the first national federations appeared. Led and run by volunteers, they will be smaller hubs that been inter uh, than the international scene. Missing people, mixing people who are not confident about the English enough. Hey, that's me! <laughs> and prefer using their native language. Runners and mappers looking for a team to compete with. And widely known community pilots who are in charge of liking the federations with the wider international community. Obviously, those federations have a reason to exist. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> Their birth was at the same time as the creation of monthly and yearly tournaments. It was in actually had a tournament, but that's another table, another story. <laughs> uh, Record-breaking bonanzas, endurance tournaments were members of uh, endurance tournaments were members of the same federation. Will take turns to play the same wall until it's beaten, starting over each time the the one playing died in the game. Huh, that sounds fun, like Iron Man, but a little bit more collective. To this day, the record is still held by the German team who played for more than eight days in a row, totaling over 300 hours of Leighton and beating all commercial loom watts in a row on ultra violence and with 100 kills. I think that's actually possible by the, by a single person, I think. I think somebody has done it. can't remember it well. To this day, the record is still held by the German team who played for more than eight days in a row. Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> Some of the watts we still regard as wrecked regimes or legendary craftsmanship were created during mapping jams by national teams competing. Upside down, <laughs> I wonder what's that reference, who laid the foundation for gravity modifying tools and weapons in ICTEC 1, was a creation from 2027 by the Australian team. But get fucking gone. <laughs> the, I, the legendary joke world was quite well published. French? <laughs> I hope I don't get banned from. from what? <laughs> from saying uh, mean words on Twitch. Uh, so, where was I? Baguette fucking gone. <laughs> That's such a name. Uh, it won the 2031 tournament by making one of the judges strike up so louder when they hold chat. <laughs> <laughs> to replace their own systems. <laughs> Holy shit. And Sunless, 
you can guess what uh, what that's a reference to. As its name speaks for itself. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Gaia. Don't say that. The police is going to find me. But of course, all good things must come to an end. In the late 2030s, some members started criticizing the Federation, saying that the Federation's severe countries had an advantage, and the smaller ones, who already struggled to find members, never stood any chance against them. This was factually true. Okay, interesting. As the most numerous had over 50,000 members at its peak in 2029, holy shit. While the smallest one never exceeded 18. That sounds more reasonable and realistic. Uh, the smaller federations were often led by a single person that was already present on the international scene, and one team got quite bored of maintaining an entire community alone. Yeah, I can I can understand that. <laughs> it can be tired. In December of 2041, wow, this really goes in. The United States Federation, <laughs> that's awesome, which was the last one standing, had to cease to exist due to a lack of opponents in any kind of tournament. And team participants were a team of friends from different countries from then on. The Federation era could have led to a darker time period with members decided to leave. Home. However, that did not happen for a very simple reason. The 10th of December of 2043, or 2043, would be the fifth anniversary of Doom's release. And big, big things were in the works. Everyone wanted to partici uh, participate in the event or help prepare them. Countless tournaments, parties, and other celebrations were planned starting in 2014. The run-up run to the event was a time like no other. You could see people silently sharing files named Mysterious, protected by passwords containing details on the event they will organize, Doom World. Even with a hardware operation specially devoted to the messaging system, could not withstand the searching people writing to each other, inviting their friends to the events, making schedules to make sure they wouldn't miss a thing, or simply talking about what, uh, what they expected, getting hyped and generally eagerly looking forward. Damn, this is getting me pretty hyped up. <laughs> it sounds like a very nice future. This led to a pretty bad overload in the server supporting the forums, and three days before the, the, the event, they went down. Sounds like uh, the usual. <laughs> they could have gone back up if everyone had calmed down or other platforms, but Doom World was a place to be in that week. And despite multiple announcements on every Doom related site, the ask performance was still over what could possibly supply, which was about 20 times higher than the usual demand. Every attempt at getting them backed up failed, and on the end of December, everything was ready except it. The announcement stating that the staff was out of possibility was given up to after 20 hours of hardware upgrades, reboots, stress tests, and now an auto shutdown threw the community in a state of complete panic. Were the events going to be cancelled? If not, where will where will they take place? Will it even go back up before the events that lasted about a week? We learn. Hmm. The mystery. Love the arch ball over here. <laughs> and in a surge of energy, a team rose. Huh. Servers all around the world were rented by some code. By some. Oh. Code was written at 4 a.m. Kind of like how I write all of my stuff. <laughs> Emergency meetings were high in the middle of the night. The speed at new network had to be built it was inhuman. And that's what inspired it. A human certainly couldn't do it in time. But what about Naya? AA, I mean. It's certainly cool, now that maybe it's obvious to you at least if you live in 2017, but mind you, in 2043, super powerful AI, AIs, or artificial intelligence, fuck it, were strained to MATLABs and the ones available to public were used to generate image or simple code, not to build an entire network from scratch in one day. Yeah, like that, that uh, AI that makes uh, random art, <laughs> that's fun. Anaya, aptly named Miga, <laughs> that's a good name, was quickly fed an enormous quantity of data to process. Finding the most efficient network and design where what type of server would be needed and where it will be should be located. Even though the old Hall of Shot where the devs who were running it were nervously talking about their chances of success was slow, everyone being awake at the time, and quite a number of people who would, shouldn't have been too, was there. 
Well, the one who was running the AI was endlessly spinning the manual cooling system as the automatic had gone down at the beginning of the process. This moment is, is unforgettable for those who were there. For over 10 minutes you were here waiting in the darkness of your room. There, were, there are over a thousand people in the chat and you only know a few of them. No one is even speaking with hello there and how's it going. Messages met by, by a blank silence. Everyone is looking at their holo screens who remain dark as only the teal central is processing message shifting in and out. The only sound that can be heard is the regular wiring of the cooling system gears as the pump pushes the fluid through. More and more six happens as time goes on. If people keep not giving up and thinking Doom's fifth anniversary will not be celebrated. Then the miracle happened. The world map that had been hopelessly blank and black started to glow as little firefly light spots appear where the computer stations should be located. Those little flickering dots in the darkness of the room of over 1,000 people around the world were limits of hope to get the site back up. Coincidentally, a pretty bad error had been made. The creator of the holo chat, and therefore at the time at least, its administrator, was also the one who was running the AI on this computer. Of course, the cooling system had to break at the precise time the map had finished appearing, which will lead to what is still today most I famous iconic code of the community. Oh no, it's not going to hold on for very long. Jesse, bring the eyes! <laughs> I can imagine that. Players where a keen eye could have spotted the ones that still known today as our hero, the ice bringer. Even though they just happened to be roommates with the one running the server, but of course, Ice did not suffice, and the computer shut down in a couple of seconds. Surprisingly, the map did not disappear, but even though it was still hosted, the holochat was not controlled anymore and the full settings were applied. <laughs> yeah, Jesse, that's a good name. Everyone's microphone uh, was unmuted, and all 3D cameras started to broadcast in the faces of all present members. This precise moment is still known as Doom World's largest force face reveal. <laughs> that would have been really awful. Or simply chaos. As soon as I gently risked it, uh, did it work? The joy that had been accumulated during the map being in round exploded. Everyone started speaking, streaming the good news to those living with them and dancing to celebrate the miracle with all the little faces in circles around the map slowly spinning in the middle. Necessary servers were set up in no time and order everyone is still present ready to stress test it. Even though a good third of them actually fell asleep during the operation. <laughs> the following day, Doom World was opened back to everyone. It seemed to work perfectly as the hundreds of different stories of what had happened shared to those who were asleep or absent did not seem to bring back then. Of course, some details were exaggerated or changed, and the probability is very high that no one knows the full story, full crew story. Hey, ship original. Welcome. <laughs> Thanks for saying hi. Go play Doom, mate. Have a good time. So, where was I? Of course, some details were exaggerated or changed, and the probability is very high that no one today knows the full true story. But this is no surprise. After all, this was the community's first historical event, and the number of witnesses did not make it any better. This version is a mix of the testimonies of one of the running the AI at two other members. They were 20 at the time, and they are nearing their 15s now. <laughs> and during your time, their visitor from 2020, they weren't even born. Time flies. But enough stressful st events for today. After that unexpected last minute save, it was now t time to party. Oh boy, was that ever a party. Of course, multiple things happen at the same time, both inside and outside of the main community, as we will call it. Everyone that had ever played a video game wanted to celebrate it. Well, every holo room in every town was booked, which is still today jokingly called the second Doom Overload. The first being early internet networks crashing under the weight of, of people playing that match when the game first released. Actually, I think that's true. I don't remember the story, but back then, internet was mostly shared on universities, and when Doom was finally released, uh, it overloaded the servers and it crashed 
the university network so they had they had to kick everyone outside everyone out the servers i mean and they reset it and i think that's how they managed to download the game i don't remember the the university indeed i didn't have the internet when doom was released yeah <laughs> internet was still in its early steps back in 1993 <coughs> where was i obviously ob obviously this did not go unnoticed by local and national media, and quite a few of them even made some kind of article about the event, wondering why people still had interest in a 50-year-old game. Wow. Many wider organizations, as in Focus on Gaming in general, organized their own events. The most common ones were char charity streams, where it was speedrunning or more cautious play. And inspiration talks where multiple, um, multiple game developers got to explain how Doom had inspired them and to influence it and its multiple sequels as well, still had on people's viewpoint on game design at the time. Not that it doesn't still have one. On the business side, plenty of commercial Doom products were announced on that day. The main one I can think of being Quake Endless. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's nice. Who released a year and a half later. But also a release of the original game fully supported by modern Hulu systems, without the use of any common source port, and of course, Kaka Demon Plushes. Because, well, who doesn't want a Kaka Demon Plush? I want one. Inside the community, outside of all the deathmatch, coup, and mapping event, the 10th of December 2043, at 8 a.m. GMT, also marks the start of the marathon. You probably don't, the reader from 2017, but any visitor from 2020 will need an explanation. Yes, we need one. The marathon was an event that lasted from the 5th anniversary of Doom to the 5th anniversary of Doom 2, so about 9 months and a half. The goal was, during this period, to never stop playing Watson on a specific server that was to be set up. Wow, I would like that. Famous develop development studio sponsored the event and will give a few cents to charity, charity each time a what was beaten. Over three thousand dollars were thirty thousand dollars were collected during the event, not counting the shop that had been brought to life by generous artists and their Doom Team designs. All profits going to charity once more. Today, having a marathon T-shirt among is a sign that you are an old member of the community. Even though you'll be the first to know that a possible reboot of the shop is being discussed, discussed. it will happen for Doom's eighth year. Yes, it is three years ahead. But a bit early plan and never hurt anybody. Man, that really sounds like... I will really love that. Sounds very fun. <coughs> on, a, on a smaller scale, quite unusual, to say the least, events happen too. You can celebrate anything without a little laugh. And the community delivered in the form of a contest where the goal was to make the most flawless imitation of Okako Demon's death sound. Oh no. <laughs> The edited sound found a contest winner with a painstakingly modified ghoul sound, and the caco sound on live saw a real long stream of people taking part in the competition by joining the holocaust, saying it's their username and going brute and leaving without a word with the jury looking at each content contestant like it's the most serious thing they have ever done. <laughs> that sounds interesting. With the contest, this situation is already quite interesting. Hey, that's how I speak. <laughs> But without context, it is the most hilarious thing ever recorded. And even though it is nearly 27 years old at this point, you can still find the entire recording spread out five times and did it to keep only the bird moments. <laughs> I will have further through a PC, PVC pipe to make a cacodim and dead son. God damn it. That, that would have honestly be quite uh, accurate. accurate. <laughs> That's a good idea. Making memories was, as you may have guessed, an important aspect to it. Hundreds of gigabytes of videos were recorded. Most of them were lost in the unfortunate events of the late 2050s. Ooh, what happened? But no less than a month ago, the Doom archaeologists announced their will to dig up everything they can find and bring it back to the light. Shout out to the Doom, young ar Doom archaeologists. As I conclude the first part of this guide, dear reader, I hope you'll go join me in wishing them good luck from the bottom of our doom-filled hearts. The evil dream. To be continued. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's the end of the very first article, the sequel to 2017. 
<coughs> as you guys may have, no uh, may have noticed, this article is like a little speculative fiction piece that uh, wonders what will happen with the community in, let's say, it's 50 years from now on. It's a very sweet little article, one that really fills my heart with joy and the idea that we're going to still be playing this game 50 years from now on is, well, quite amazing. I mean, how old is Doom? I think it's already 29? I mean, almost three deca decades old, and we are still playing it. So, I guess the the idea of the article is in that far-fetched out. It's actually quite possible. <laughs> I do like the <laughs> the concept of the Federation having over what? 80,000 members, that's insane. <laughs> and I also really like the idea of the marathon. And to play Doom for an entire week with no stop and various people cycle through different what's That does sound fun. <laughs> Time to me to die for. <laughs> Don't die, Gaia. Okay, now let's do a quick read with Roblox Console Doom Chronicles. Really, really like the design in this one. It's so awesome. That uh, Xbox style green. It's really sweet. It reminds me of the Matrix. Looks pretty cool, that's for sure. <laughs> I always love this image. Okay, so I'm just going to take a quick pause, going to drink some water. I'm actually not used to talking this much. <laughs> I already feel exhausted. So, be right back. All right, I'm back. Was just taking a uh, drink in some water. Reading out loud always takes longer. Yeah, that's true. I still remember back in high school when I was forced to read the uh, books in front of the class. Even a single page felt like eternity. But don't worry, I think we can skim through some of this and quickly reach uh, the end, I think. <laughs> so. Let's see, let's start with uh, here. <laughs> Look at the gates. I think this fuck the picture is real. Not with the logo, <laughs> but I think it, <laughs> they actually made him pose like that. It looks cool. So, Roblox Console Done Chronicles by, you guessed it, Roblox. Hello, my fellow refined demons. What are we talking about? Well, I think that if you can write this, you can read the title. Unless someone's only reading you this part, skip the title. <laughs> That's me. In which case, I'm going to read it for you. But as you may know, we have already taken a look at every single classic Doom cons uh, console Doom port. Up until now, every port of Doom had some level of compromise to its level geometry, looks, or gameplay, and sometimes all three at once. There were, uh, there were successful attempts and less successful ones. But now, that task will no longer be impossible with the release of Doom 3 for the big mother hubbard of all 6 gen consoles, especially when it comes to controllers. I name the Xbox. Never actually owned an Xbox. 
I own an Xbox 360, but uh, not the original one, the boxy. I had a PS2, PlayStation 2, and I was in love with the PlayStation 2. This makes you wonder why there wasn't a PlayStation 2 port for Doom. Hmm. <coughs> the Xbox, probably due to it being Microsoft's construction, was and still is pretty much a very powerful gaming PC architecture built into a console. While the original Xbox wasn't successful compared to the Xbox 360 and Xbox One, it did still lead to the creation of the French ants who must not be named to identify <laughs> Halo. Yes. I just say that part. I don't think Halo is the black sheep. I think it's more Half Life. Uh, at least in the when it comes to the opinion of boomer shooter farms, a lot of people seem to think that Half Life kind of ended the era of arena shooters. That's an interesting topic to discuss someday. Apart from that, the Xbox also had Doom 3 making an appearance, and with its collector edition came part of Doom 1 and Doom 2. Yes, that's a BFE edition, or not. No, that's not. I think I'm confusing the edition. Directly being based off the PC version, like every other console Doom port before. So, let's take a look at the development, develop, development <laughs> of the very first modern Doom console port, and probably the only one we are gonna cover. Always love the Doom Tree core. So let's do let's do some points. Oh look at those screenshots. Fucking love the aesthetic of those pixels. Chunky. My original Xbox C D drive broke. <laughs> yeah. There that was a problem back when you had to put the games, the DVDs and CDs or the Blu rays even. I remember the PS3 I had to put the Blu-ray every time I wanted to play and the disc will come out hot of so much spinning. I think some PC games also had that. That's why the cracks started to appear. You know, for old school pirates, <laughs> a crack was like a like a key that allowed you to play a game without having to use the disc 24/7. Not it was pretty useful in the end of the day because uh, the disc will get very damaged if you use it too much. Especially nowadays that people play up to 10 hours daily. <laughs> so, a quick little refresher. So we could talk right away about this port, but trust me, I could probably have grouped this port, the BFG edition and the Uniport in the same article, but ca because in terms of pure Doom, there really isn't much to talk about in the terms of development. Instead, let's see how, how we arrived here. We could talk right away about... Uh, oh, there's a copy here. Hmm, we have to fix that. The first Doom ports were Jake or Doom and Doom 32X. To accommodate for the smaller storage capabilities and inferior hardware, it made all the changes we are now so familiar with. <laughs> well, the capability of these changes were truly really necessary, especially for the 32X port, as proof projects like Doom 3X Delta, Doom 3X Rusher Enter, or simply the prototype for that port, is that what was done, and then, port after port, the Jaguar version was used as a base for almost all of the following ports. Jaguar version. This one. Of course, as we are discovered over these past issues, it was not supposed to be like that. The 32X port was based off the Jaguar port as it was being developed at the same time, and the tight deadline for, the, for it to be released on the 32X launch day made finishing the more PC accurate port that was seen in early protos as an impossible task. And so did improve the and so did improving the music, it seems. PlayStation Doom is the only port that was probably intended to be based off Jaguar Doom from the start of development, and improved upon by adding many more maps, a new CD quality soundtrack, cool lighting effects, restored the missing demons, and even added Doom 2 to the mix, along with a few custom levels. Who doesn't like the stripper Raven and first of all? <laughs> All the other ports that were based off Jaguar Doom, not intended. 3DO Doom had to be rushed together into five weeks because of Randy Scott's terrible understanding of a game development. Hmm. While well, certain Doom and GBA Doom apparently had better engines based off the PC version before they got Carmack, 
<laughs> and had to switch to be a Jaguar based port instead. For better or for worse. Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah, Doom 64 and GBA Dooms can trace back to Jaguar Doom too. Huh. It's actually a lot of console Doom history, I don't really mu uh, know much. Split levers or even entirely missing ones in the case of SNES Doom. So yeah. Up until now, no official Doom port was accurate to the original DOS version. That would be the final change with Xbox Doom. Hmm. So Xbox Doom was ultimately the most accurate port, the most accurate console port that is. And you can see in the picture, it looks, well, pretty DOS to me. <laughs> so, I think we could skip some of it, trying to... It is a pretty interesting article, but I gotta read others. <laughs> I just love this. So, if you're interested in learning some of the history of the console Doom Chronicles, you can check out pretty much the entire series of the was and issues. Roblox has been giving us a consistent series of articles so far. And the Xbox Doom is the latest one in the series, and it's quite fun to read. <coughs> On the next one, Samsara Reincarnation. This one is a special one, it was submitted by the Samsara team, and it is quite interesting. It's pretty much the entire history of the mod, well, the reincarnation variation of it. And the design we did with this one was very sweet. I really love the way the colors are done here, the gallery, the presentation, and everything. Let's read a little bit of it. Some Sarah Recarnation, written by Mili Mario and various other contributors. Sam Sarah was originally created by Terminus S13 with the development of the development why does that war is so hard <laughs> why uh, with the development on it starting in 2012 citing inspiration from crossover fighting games terminus goal for sansara was to bring in characters from various classic fps games and adapt them to doom while remaining faithful to the source material another goal was for sansara and to be playable in multiplayer Terminus version of Samsara won a Kakor in 2013 and got the widespread praise throughout the community. Terminus seized the Wargame Samsara in 2014 with version 03 and beta version 031 on November 25, 2012. The concept for Samsara Monster Mixer by Shaolink 223 and Minisea was born, an add on for Samsara that thought to bring in the monsters from all the charity source games to the company Samsara with the same faithfulness the char characters received. On November 28, 2012, a server was host for the very first version of it, which marked the first official release. Samsara Monster Mixer was added to the Samsara GitHub Wiki by Terminus on December 23, 2012, after the release, making it official. Damn, that's a lot of dates. They really have this very well uh, well organized. I like when articles do go into the detail of being quite specific with the dates, the events, the happenings and stuff like that. <coughs> After Terminus ceased work on Sansara, various attempts for a proper continuation were made. In approximately June 2050, Sansara was successfully continued by Jesh. Assisted by Dynamo, shout out to Dynamo. <laughs> Next, plus Circon, Shiny Miragross, who joined later on, and others to fix books. And, uh, and add more characters for another FPS game. This version of the mod was known as Samsara Add ons, and later rebranded to Samsara Extra Heroes at an unknown point in time. Ha, they actually don't know there. <laughs> On April 25, 2016, Kinsey released an update to Terminus Samsara that sort of fixed bugs and make it compatible with both GC Doom and Shandro Noom 3.0. This update was maintained until October 12, 2016 when version 0.3666 was released. Always good to have lots of 6 in your 
versions, <laughs> especially if you're making a, dumb, a Doom one. This was the final version of Kingsley Sansara update. I joined the Sansara Extra Heroes team in 2017 after Yesh and Shiny Mithras reached out to me during one of my Sunday Night Slaughterfest events I had hosted at the time. I often host deathmatch and cooperative events with Samsara and my events brought a lot of attention to the project. At the time, I, brought, I was brought as a beta tester and then eventually promoted to administrator of the Discord. Talking about Bibli Mario here. <coughs> Those screenshots are pretty cool. The idea of the mod, as you guys can see, is that it's pretty much a collection of various characters, weapons, mods, and stuff like that, all packed in a single uh, package that's pretty damn fun to play. Especially with friends, it's like one of those games that are so cautiously good, they'll rate. <coughs> Think I can read this uh, box. Really like the design of this, just looks so sweet, man. The colors and everything. <laughs> So lovely, the designers did such a great job. Development on Samsara Extra Heroes had slowed down significantly from 2020, uh, 2018 on, and the team was very secretive about their work. Crew just resigned from the project in early 2020, and Shiny Metacross became the leader and the new maintainer not long after Jess's resignation. Version HCC2 of Samsara Extra Heroes was released on July 10, 2020, along with version 0.81 of Monster Mixer, version HC2, merch version 8.3666, that's a lot of numbers, of Kinsey's update to Samsara to make it so all players could play without running into any issues. Huh, that's a lot of job to do. <laughs> Along with the usual book fixes and also the introduction of new characters, this was without doubt the most important up to date uh, Samsara, to date Samsara Extra Heroes in a very long time and it opened the doors to a wider audience. This was the final version under the Extra Heroes brand. On January 1, 2021, we rebranded into Samsara Reincarnation. However, there is a distress bit between when we started using the new name versus when it became official. Hmm. In February 2021, I felt that the secrecy of our work was happening in development and had the team push out of beta, beta version to be released immediately with all of our team current changes <coughs> and to start doing open beta testing with the public. I hosted an event on February 13, 2021 with, the with this version of Sansara, which has just been rebranded re re to Reincarnation, to show the public just how far the project had come since the last stable version of Extra Heroes was released, which became ancient fairly quickly and no longer, no longer represented the project in its current form. The event was a massive success and revitalized the team and the Samsara community. This was just the beginning and prompted many open beta testing sessions going forward. Development continued with Gusto in December 2021, and the team worked at breakneck speed to release a new stable, stable version for nearly two months. The rebrand at this point was made official and on February 9, 2022, a brand new trailer was released revealing what was to come in version 1.0 and we were working on for version 1.1, perfectly showcasing that we had truly both from Transara Extra Heroes. The trailer generated considerable hype and led to me expanding our social media presence significantly the very next day to keep our momentum going and give, and give us future marketing networking opportunities. From this point forward, we were committed to being absolutely faithful to the characters in our project and their source material. Same with their monsters and Monster Mixer was also rebranded to Remixer and now companion to Reincarnation. We were also committed to fixing further bugs and quality control issues plaguing older versions. This was the true beginning of Samsara Reincarnation entering the spotlight. Wow, that's a lot of story, mate. <coughs> they really kept fresh the dates, the updates. Damn, this is some really Wikipedia ne level of work. Samsara is pretty cool. If you guys haven't played it, you should definitely try it. You can play it quite easily with your frames on Sandro Noom. <laughs> it's quite fun. And as you can see in the pictures, it's perfect with pretty much any kind of what you have out there. So, quite stuff. 
DMW is great to keep track of history. Yes, I, mean, I absolutely love that. I love the fact that each issue has a little piece of history that you wouldn't find in any other place. The Doom community actually has an insane amount of history. After all, we're almost three decades old. But uh, since there's no way to properly archive it or to preserve it, you can only hear from it either by comments, by searching all forums, or by being told by someone that was there. So yeah, learning the history of Doom can be a little bit troublesome, but it is possible. That's why I love the Wasin, because I like to think that we help in preserving the community history. <coughs> Just going to take a little bit sip of water again. <laughs> Oof, I actually had to bring in a bottle of water. <laughs> Breathing out loud is really tiring, especially if you're used to it. I wonder how teachers do it. <laughs> so, quick two stuff. This is a map by the Camaleon Maligno from 2015. This review was done by Gaia74. I remember Quake 2 very well. It was my brother's favorite game and it is still one of his favorites. I had never played it until some years later, I did and I liked it a lot. However, I ran out of levels a bit and I always thought that the enemies from Quake 2 they are great thing. I was fascinated by the idea of the Strokes, it was a rewarding experience when it got to do. I knew that it was, I was very capable of many things, but when I saw this it blew my mind. I remember playing Quake 2 some time ago. I wasn't such a big fan of it. I think I enjoyed Quake 1 more. So, <clears throat> if there is something that I never thought would be possible, it's to, to, it is to emulate almost one game in another to perfection. Although there are many mods that now do it, this one is one that I simply still like and enjoy. I present to you Quake 2 stuff. A very aptly named mod. <laughs> Even compatible with Sandroman 3.0, so it means multiplayer compatible, it fully emulates with the capa capabilities of Decorate, the enemies of Quake 2. This will not be surprising to worry for the fact that gameplay is too faithful to the original, something that not all mods achieve in bringing them, not with sprites. If not with the same models, really giving the impression that you're playing Quake 2 and not Doom. Also, if there's something that I really applaud, it is the attention to detail, and this mod does not forget. The enemies make the sounds of the original, the little, the movement, the animations, all. Yeah, I love the atmosphere of Quake 1, of course, Quake 2 does seem to get my attention, interesting. Yeah, I think it makes sense. Uh, Quake 2 was like more technical, it kind of reminds me like of Crisis. Like, when Crisis came out, the game was amazing, but people loved that, not because of the gameplay or the story, but just because it was a technical marvel. And I think Quake 2 was on the same, kind of the same role. A really impressive game, but when it came to playing, eh, it wasn't that great compared to, origin to the original. Uh, following... The weapons are faithful, even the grenades you will see when you try it, XD. <laughs> the HUD is the same as the original, bringing those icons of the weapons. There really is nothing that is not the same as the original Quake 2. Even the powers, trust me, you will love to have a Quake Damage in your inventory. Oh yes, the Quake Damage is one of my favorite things in any kind of a game. Any FPS game that has some sort of double damage or Quake Damage buff, I loved it. If you enjoy the gameplay of Quake 2, you will really enjoy this, although it still has an enemy without replacing the Pain Elemental. Oh, 
It is a great mod that I recommend without problems if you need Quake 2. Not only because of how well work it is, but because it will say that it is the port of Quake 2, only that it is compat compatible with the levels of Doom, bringing those with unique and right strokes to the port of Doom. Oh, also there is a surprise in the street enemies in the street enemies of Doom 2. Huh. That makes you wanna play. Quake 2 stuff, you can get it on the forums. It's actually another thing of the ma uh, the issues, if you guys haven't noticed, you can go to the logos or search for a little download icon and it will direct you to the link. And wait for 64 damage. <laughs> okay man, we'll do it just for you. So this is going to do a quick recap. <coughs> the community roundup was the idea to make a little weekly roundup of news for the wall scene and Doom World, but since the delays were so large and I was getting a little bit tired of managing so many projects, I decided to just make one. Uh, it pretty much uh, categorizes Doom news in what's, or what releases, source ports, speed running, multiplayer, and mods. The speed running category, there's actually a lot of really interesting demos you guys should check out here. It's pretty fun. Oh, there's also the was in it too. Here. <laughs> the Doom Wiki, the Encyclopedia from Hell. This is an awesome article. I did this one, and I think you should guys should read it. Mostly because it talks about the Doom Wiki. Uh, one of my favorite Doom projects. Something I think needs more support, more... Um, more comments or just more discussion. The Doom Wiki has a lot of interesting articles. They really make a great job at preserving the history of our game and the uh, uh, the job the editors do, their work. It's like it's such a honorable duty. It really makes it worth. Yeah, the Doom Wiki is fantastic. You can find so much good stuff there. I've been contributing to it for a while now, and it's always been fun. The experience has been great so far. Fandom Wiki on Doom 64 got so much wrong, but the Doom Wiki gets it all right. Yeah, that's for sure. And <laughs> the fandom don't, don't even come near that thing. <laughs> the true Doom Wiki is the Doom Wiki with Wiki. <laughs> <coughs> the job these guys do is amazing. There's a little list of interesting Doom Wiki pages you can check out here. Each list is uh, redirect to the article. Some really interesting stuff you guys can learn from here. It's really amazing. These are some of my favorite articles. There's other articles that are pretty useful and really right. You can find them there. This article also has a interview with Dynamo, Synth, and Quasar. Dynamo is an editor at the Doom Wiki, same as Synth. Synth is actually probably the most active editor at the Doom Wiki. The, j the job he does is insane. He's always there, always fixing stuff, always looking after the articles. It's great. And of course, Quasar is like the big, 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 big guy, the big boss of the, w the Doom Wiki. So yeah, you guys should check this out. Also, you can get One Humanity, <laughs> the latest map from John Romero, only for five euros. All the dollar, uh, I mean, all the money uh, from this goes directly to Ukraine support for, you know, the war and all the stuff. And it's a really cool little map. It really showcases, like, some of the stuff that we'll see once we Sigil 2 comes out. And it's great. It's great. Really excited for it. <coughs> hey, some sort of reincarnation. What's up, guys? Not exactly sure who you who's here, Milly Mario. <laughs> but anyway, welcome. Quasar is a good community member of ours working at night. Oh yes, of course. I forgot that Quasar does work at night dive. And Night Dive has been doing some great work at rescuing all FPS games. <coughs> so, because this is a very long article, <laughs> I think you should, you guys should read it on your own. <laughs> I'm, I'm losing my voice already. Just going to read a little bit of our uh, anniversary issue. So, 
originally this issue wasn't going to be released today it was supposed to come out three months ago but you know stuff happens so we realized that the anniversary july 19th was coming soon we decided to wait a little bit while i did a special article for the anniversary hey that beer of that what's up welcome <laughs> uh, so this issue was going to be just a regular issue, but since the anniversary was coming, I decided to do a little bit of work with it. And we added this little feature for it. It's pretty cool. It's pretty much a little collection of both uh, interesting facts and comments from some of our contributors and most uh, active members. <coughs> for example, here are some curious facts about the Wazin. Released on July 19, 2020, Doomkid was the very first interview member. That's right. I actually did an interview with him some time ago, back when I didn't have graphic design. Alcadema was the very first master recommendation. That's also right. I remember I was playing Akaldema with the Don't War Megawatt Love. It was a pretty great experience. I remember the last maps kicking my ass, but I still love that map. <coughs> Issue number three cover was made by me, and it's the only cover I've done so far. That's also right. <laughs> I've only done one cover in my life, <laughs> because, you know, I don't have the skills to do graphic design. But uh, I wanted to make it because I didn't have the support back then. And I tried my hand at it, and it was quite successful. Format and Nico Senos, our graphic designers, also joined in issue 3. Yep, those dudes joined and immediately at issue 4, it, the was seen evolve. It became something else. Issue number 3 cover was made by me. At, I already read this. And Dread Riker was the first Discord member and the creator of most of the emojis. Yeah, <laughs> Dread Riker, pity he's not here today. Uh, had the honor to be the very first member of the Discord. He also helped me manage some of the early stages of it. <coughs> Immorpher, <laughs> what's up, Immorpher? The almighty D64 Sage joined in issue number three. Yep. Since Immorph joined, we pretty much have covered uh, Doom 64 articles ever since. I don't think there's been any issues so far without a D64 feature. We we'll always try to cover the classic games, and since I'm not an expert on all of them, it's always great when I have, uh, you know, people like In Warfare who really know their stuff, and his articles are always a great joy to read. Forman Xeno is an amazing graphic work. Yes, they fucking do. I fucking love them. <laughs> Thanks, man. So, um,. The Noob Gamer was the first new stuff reviewer. Afterwards, Lady Miss Dragon would take the helm. Yep. By issue number three, Ellen made our lovely seal of approval. That's right. Also, by issue number three, he also made the logo, I think. Chris Hansen was our first host after Doom King. I remember Chris Hansen commented on some of our threads and he showed us his website. And told us that he could host some of our issues, and I thought that was great. Especially because back then we didn't have our own website, so that was a fucking life saving. <coughs> but issue number six, our iconic full logo, was created by Ellen. Yep, this lovely logo done by this legend. Issue number four was the first issue to see a completely new visual makeover, thanks to these legends over here. Issue number seven was our first Halloween special. I remember doing that uh, version. <coughs> Sorry. We also did an extremely large article about what recommendations are spooky. <laughs> that was fun. All right, moving on. Issue number eight was the Walls in the Wars features. Yeah, the very first Walls in the Wars were in issue number eight. The Walls in the Wars were kind of inspired by the idea of doing a celebration 
of Doom, but focuses mostly on the, you know, obscure side of the Doom community. Like uh, writers, reviewers, articles, stuff like that. Now the f uh, the Wars in Awards have evolved a bit more, and I'm actually planning some really great stuff for the Wars in Awards of this year. Hopefully they are going to be really fucking sweet. Really want to see that. <clears throat> also there, on issue number 8, our first Heretic Seal of Approval was given to Fadeless Trilogy by Jimmy, a great one. John Romero was featuring in issue uh, number 11, we did a Q&A. Issue number 40 was the first issue to break the 100 pages goal, something that has now become quite common. Issue number 50 is our biggest edition yet, with 126 pages. Damn! The Weather College project was created during issue number 14 with the help of Arrowhead. Arrowhead is one of our most active members. He's an absolute unit. He makes dozens of reviews and he's also really great at editing. In that issue, issue number 15, we also featured the Sino. Wow! Yeah, that was awesome. Meeting the Sino was great. It's a pretty cool guy. Uh, up to issue number 70, the Wazin has produced 1,263 pages, one, uh, 106 articles, and 143 complete WAD reviews. That's a lot. We've done some insane work. The Wazin at this point is pretty much encyclopedia size. <laughs> it's really us. Awesome. The most prolific article writers have been in Morpher. Yep. A legend, Roblos and Roblos so far. They both of them have been focused on the Doom console uh, articles, and they pretty much have been giving us content without stopping so far. <coughs> the most prolific what reviewers had been Arrowhead, the Evil Ring, the one that did the 2017 article, Eric Klaus, and Lady Miss Dragon. Lady Miss Dragon especially does the new stuff each issue. And she's always reviewing tons of new ones. <laughs> yeah, he's really good at reading. He really knows how to edit too. <laughs> yeah, it seems so. I mean, there's a lot to talk about, so I don't blame you guys. <laughs> In celebration of Quake 25 years, we launched a mini issue for it, the Quake Master magazine. Yeah, I actually want to do another one of those. It was pretty fun. It was only like 12, 11 pages long, but uh, I loved working on it. <coughs> I would actually like to do more mini issues like that, like for Duke Nukem 3D or Unreal Tournament. I would absolutely love to do one for the real community. Those guys deserve better. <laughs> The Ultimate Master What Guide is the biggest article yet, featured on issue 8, clocking at 6,321 words. Yep, I did that one and it took me so long to do it. Not only because I had to write a lot, but because I also had to take a screenshots for every single goddamn what and map and oh god. It was a pain in the ass, but I fucking love that article, especially because it's like... 100 watt recommendations in a single uh, guide. It's pretty awesome. And finally, over 26 different Doomers have made submissions for the Wazin. So yeah, over 26 different people have given us different articles, either by, uh, you know, uh, write-ups or by what corners. So we have quite a long team for now. The quick community often talks about how much they love the munition and wishes they had a was in. I'm holding it right for that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, go I'm, ref I'm definitely going to do that. You know, I could actually write a lot of stuff for Quake, Unreal, Duke Nukem, Heretic, whatever you think. But the only reason I don't do it is because of the graphic design. Doing graphic design like this, like the was in, really takes a long time. <laughs> and it's quite, quite, quite the undertaking. So this little section over here is was in experiences. These are comments by our community, by some of our most active contributors. This is pretty cool. You, sh you guys should read. It's really, it's really warm. It's really hot warming. I love this. And this was a community survey I did some time ago. 
mostly about our fans and what they think about the wasing. As you can see, we actually have a very nice uh, rating. From one that's mediocre to five, that's fantastic. Most rated us between four and five, so it's awesome. Hell to Pay and Perdition's Gate by Jake the Boy Spar. This is an awesome article that analyzes the commercial watch. <coughs> Definitely worth checking out. The quick packaging will need a dedicated <laughs> packaging. That's awesome. Yeah, they will need it for sure. I, I would love to write for them, but uh, until I have the signers, it's quite hard to do so. So, uh, this section actually starts the what corners, which are reviews and stuff like that. This one was done by Eric Klaus, awesome reviewer. Here we have Bigor by me. Bigor is a really awesome one. This particular map really fucking kicked my ass, but it was awesome. I'm actually currently playing uh, Hell to Pay and Partitions Gate, inspired by this article. I'm planning to do my own complete review of Partitions Gate first, and then Hell to Pay. I actually have to admit, I do wish there was more commercial watts from the 90s. I, I was expecting Partitions Gate to be like, meh in quality, but I was surprised that most of the maps are pretty damn cool so far, so going to be excited for that. I personally love the hell to pay in Persian Gator. Those were so underrated. It's, yeah, I know, it's, it's ridiculous. I think that's partially because it's hard to find them since they are commercial, but I think at this point none of the the companies that publish the watch are actually active, so they're probably abandoned where somewhere. So it shouldn't be so hard to find. They're pretty demos. <laughs> yeah, we're getting close, we're getting close. So Warlave is a what I haven't played that. It's pretty cool. I love the gothic style textures, you should guys check it out. <coughs> Blackness is a heretic what that was reviewed by Came Sexy and this was created by the legendary Kaiser, like one of the most active and precious community members we've ever had. Also, him sexy is so good at making reviews, man. You guys definitely should check out his blog post. Over a thousand reviews by now, I think. I know it's a commercial watch. Laura's Doom. Hmm. I actually haven't heard of that one. Oh yeah, the lots episodes of Doom. I do know that one. I think that one's even harder to find. Because that one has a book, and the book is not available on the internet, as far as I know. I would love to find it. Combat Chuck. Combat Chuck is... Pff, combat Chuck. I mean, do I need to tell you what Combat Chuck is? Because this one is like a nightmare. It's really freaking hardcore. But it's pretty cool. Not the kind of stuff I will play. Beyond Revival. Beyond Revival was an interesting one that I played some time ago. The... The watch boom compatible, I think, and it has a very vanilla aesthetic mixed with some of the boon tweaks, and it's fucking perfect. I love the duration of it and how consistent the watch feels throughout, especially because the style is more on the brown quake kind of side, and it works quite well. I just love it. Hey, Johnny Cruelty, welcome. Hey, awesome. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. I'm already going to say sorry because I'm losing my voice, <laughs> but um, I'm almost finishing. Altar of Evil. This one's pretty awesome. It's a classic. It's for Sea Doom. It came out in 2005. It's already quite old, yet the detail and the level quality and the architecture, the design is. It's just great. It's really fucking awesome. You guys re definitely should play this one. I think it uh, uh, won a Kako War, so you know it has to be good stuff. Doom 2, the way it did, like one of the most famous watts of all time. <laughs> I think it was once one, probably in between the top 10 watts I've played first. I think I should play it again. I already forgot most of it. Definitely deserves a replay. Oh, I remember this, <laughs> that level. Doomlands. So, Doomlands is like a very special one because it's by BPRD, one of the most enigmatic 
uh, what makers of all time. Dude makes some of the most shitty maps like Nuts and then goes on to make the Mocus Flow and Groove. Those are like some of the greatest words that have ever come to existence. Well, Mocus Flow is actually a map, part of community chess, but still. Uh, a lot of people don't know, but Doomlands is one of the very first uh, standalone words that BPRD did. But it w it's not very well known, actually. It's a collection of maps, it's three levels actually, and they are quite good, they are pretty damn good. I mean, of course they have that 90s feel to it, well, early 2000s, but still, you should check it out, mostly just for the historical valor that it has. 100 Lanes by Adam Campella and Witzer. This one is an iconic one. I think I played it some time ago, can't remember quite well. It's one of those classic... Uh, limitation watts where you put yourself a limit and try to create maps around it the maps are pretty short they are sweet they are fun and it's really worth it and this is a little word that's not worth talking about so we'll skip it for now <laughs> nah just kidding then 64 reloaded oh boy this one is by inmorpher hey endless what's your thousand and three name only i haven't actually played that one I think it was recently released, right? Definitely going to check that out soon. Just need to finish some of the other watts I'm already playing. <laughs> so, Doom 64 Reloaded, and we're at page, uh, page 64. Yeah, a coincidence. <laughs> yeah, l give me a sec, I'm just going to take a little bit of water. <laughs> the endless boy bad weather <laughs> yeah I'm going to have to think about that one. Oh boy I'm actually losing my voice god damn I'm really not used to speaking like not even in real life I swear I actually don't talk that much I say like hi goodbye good evening and that's it that's my social that's, that's how long my social skills go. <laughs> so my voice is really giving up on me right now. But come on, can do this. I can do this. So <laughs> Yeah, I will I uh, uh, going to have to do that was in Doom Bad Water. It's going to be sweet. Doom 64 reload by Inmorpher, the review. And this is a mod by Atomic Frog, released in 2022. <coughs> it has been 25 years since the release of Doom 64, and many will be replaying the game to honor this anniversary. Happy 25 years to Doom 64, by the way. With more computer screens and lighting options, Doom 64 is less dark and perhaps less hot than when it was first released. However, there might be a way to relieve how it terrified kids in the 90s, not in the way the game actually is, but from the imagination of Atomic Frog. Doom 64 Reload is an enhancement on 64 that has been two years in the making. It takes the 64 engine to its limit to expand upon the already creep atmosphere of the game. Episode 1 was covered way back in issue 9 of the Doom Master 1 scene, which only had the first set of tech bases overhaul. Now the whole campaign has been reloaded for a complete experience. At 32 megabytes of additional content, it's nearly four times the size of the original game itself. You can tell by that screenshot alone, this is serious. That looks awesome. Have you ever played the Eurasian Dome 1 for 2012? No, it's actually on my two playlists. I know that one. I think it was made by the Boss Clan. What was the name? Yeah, Boss Clan. I think Linus participated on it. I haven't, but I do want to play it. It's so hard to play so many Watts, man. There's so much good stuff to play nowadays. <laughs> <coughs> the driving force behind Doom 64 Reloaded, a Atomic Frog, formerly Crusa, has been mapping for Doom 64 for over a decade now. 
He honed his skills by learning the construction of the original Doom 64 levels, thus the way that he constructs switches, bridges, and lighting is in the style of the original 64 developers. It makes sense that if anyone was going to take on remixing Doom 64, it would be Atomic Frog. Although the project was his vision, he was not alone. Work from Nii, Winnie, Inboy, Footman, Dexias, and many more, myself included, shout out to the Morpher, was used here. Anything that could be used to take advantage of 64 features was used to get most of the engine. When Doom 64 Reload is booted up, it begins with a brand new cut scene introduction to the game. It is definitely 64, but more detail and more foreboding. Yeah, Atomic Frost has been my first. <laughs> That's awesome. It's pretty nice when you take your, uh, when, the, you know, mappers that had been doing this stuff for decades finally get the spotlight. Yeah, it's always good to... Yeah, that's why you have to keep stuff doing it. You always have to be very consistent and without even notices, you might end up being like one of the top mods of the community. Have you ever played the Doom What the Long Track back home? I have not yet. <laughs> And I know that what. The reason I haven't played much of the what's you're mentioning right now is because I've been busy doing a lot of uh, playthroughs of uh, 90s what's. Mostly obscure stuff. I should probably stop playing so many obscure 90 what's. <laughs> so, the levels have more texture, variety, geometry, and shadows from careful sector work. You will see some of the original Doom 64 levels have now become frozen over or are now pits of flesh. The skyboxes are double in resolution to give a better sense of distance, and the sprites have been updated too with new item graphics and weapon details. The lever action of the BFG is particularly stylish. Even the shotgun zombies have a more distinct palette now, so you can tell them apart from regular zombies. Then each level has a new section which transitions to the next level for a more seamless experience. If that was not enough, new smoke, mist, and a toxic hay gives uh, more variety and atmosphere. It is unusual as long time Doom 64 man to be surprised by the game making. Yeah. That's a really good sentence because it really captures the idea of how great this is. Have you ever played Doom 2? <laughs> yeah, I think I have, <laughs> more than once. Look at those screenshots, they are so freaking awesome. Fucking love this one particularly. It has a very unique vibe to it. I love the old ruins style. <coughs> the sun crack has been overhauled where it has been doubled in size from 24 cracks to 52. <coughs> in the full campaign, including the secret level, so no crack is repeated. Each level has its own soundscape, then some of the original cracks have been debugged to loop properly. Hmm. Man, look at this. Reminds me of Turok a little bit. Previously unknown features of Doom 64 X as, as of two years ago were the verb and Charles effects for MIDI. Now these effects have been added to each track and manually adjust. The Doom 64 soundtrack has a special reverb for the first time, which is not too dissimilar to the PS Doom 1 soundtrack. Then the terrorist effects adds a warbling distortion of madness to some of the environmental sounds as well. Overall, the soundtrack is thicker and more atmospheric. If you can believe the Doom 64 soundtrack can be any more atmospheric. <laughs> yeah. The level design and projection has been updated too. With our new secrets and new levers are to be found, the crushers and traps are deadlier with some additional ways to avoid them. Some of the puzzles are less mysterious, such as the yellow key room final outpost. But then there are trickier puzzles that lead to many super secrets, which will not be spoiled here. Rightfully so. <laughs> Look at this, it looks so awesome. And if you want the demon's keys or an early unmaker, you will need to dig deeper than before, if you do you will find new levels to explore. Now the old phone levels and hectic have now been redesigned into a mini campaign entitled The Trail of Pain. 
At the end of this path lies the coveted features menu with the classic cheats and warp options. From here you will find four brand new fun levels. The fun level Carol Chaos is a particular standout for a high flying action. Then some of the new levels also appear in the main campaign sequence. These additional levels are remixed for the classic absolution total conversion or are Atomics Frost originals. In total, the number of levels has been expanded to 48 with seven additional deathmatch maps. So there are a lot of mysteries to unfold. It's reminiscent of how Dumb 64 was so mysterious back in the 90s. It was, it really was. Jedi Temple level is brand new, one made by Tommy Oh, <coughs> I actually haven't seen those beta shots. Have you made uh, Have you made an article of beta Doom 64? That will be great. You probably have. <laughs> You've done so much articles for the was it's insane, man. Oh, you definitely should cover it, man. That sounds like a really cool article, especially like spe uh, stuff like beta and alpha or good content. <clears throat> Alternate classic like Doom 64 is undoubtedly controversial. The way we remember Doom 64 is unique to each person who played it, so some of the changes won't appeal to all fans. Yeah, that always happens. But it's interesting to see how another 64 superfan views the game through the expansion of the game. Overall, the additions to the atmosphere is what stands out. There is a scent of red around each corner and what may be lurking in the shadows. Then the additional secrets sprinkled out throughout the campaign add a layer of mystique and perhaps a sense of madness. This is not how Doom 64 actually is, but how many might have remembered the game being like in 1996. 97, I mean. That is dark, mysterious, and haunting. In Morpher. So, this is Doom Reloaded. Doom 64 Reloaded. You guys should definitely check this out. The levels are just out of this world. These two pictures in particular, and this one, they really tell a story on themselves. It's awesome. It's awesome. <laughs> no problem, man. If I lose my voice, you owe me a new one. <laughs> think I'm going that. Uh, think I'm going to be mute after this. <coughs> Look at this, this is awesome. Love this description. I always love when Watts use gore to the fullest. Looks awesome. <laughs> I'm going to need more than a glass of water, man. Alright, so the next article, as usual, we finish the what corner section with a uh, master recommendation. Our master recommendations are like the what's that stand out from the rest that are usually chosen by me. I used to do uh, one master recommendation per issue, so that way by the end of the year we will have 12 master recommendations in total, one for each month. But sadly, due to the changes in the deadlines and the delays we have suffered, I am now deciding to make the master recommendations different. Instead of doing a master recommendation each issue, I think I'm going to make an entire list of 12 master recommendations by the end of the year. That way I can add it to the Walls in Awards feature and make it more uh, proper in the sense of what cover-ups. Uh, for a little um, comment, Corruptor Sister is absolutely awesome. It's a little level that's inspired by one of my other favorite FPS games, Unreal. And you can see by the screenshots alone, it does have that incredible feel to it. Like, if you guys have played Unreal, you know there's a lot of temple levels, a lot of abandoned runes and stuff like that in caves, caverns, and the planet exploration. It's just awesome. Unreal really has a unique atmosphere. And lots. One of the veteran members of our community is still active to this day. Made Corruptor System for GC Doom. And I played the map and it's awesome. It's really, really fucking awesome. I just loved it. Especially because I'm a big fan of Unreal. So seeing the levels of Unreal with the gameplay and style of Doom. That's just Chevsky's. 
fucking loved it. And of course, there's an interview with lots over here, lots of stuff you can learn about. For, for example, let's start with the first one. Lots, a community veteran with a lot of aces up his lips. Tell us, how did your history with Doom begin? First of all, thanks for the man. Who doesn't have a chance to talk about him herself? <laughs> I do. <laughs> Secondly, it's a good thing that I have never tried to hide just how old I am related to most uh, in this community, since I would otherwise have to lie through my teeth to answer this question. And finally, I purchased a shareware version of Doom on a 3.5 disc from Staples, the floppy disc, I think, while walking home from school in the spring of 1994 at the tender age of 50. Shortly thereafter, I sent it so for more in the mail <laughs> for the full version. Uh, 1.2 at the time, as you can see in the image below. This one right here. As is probably obvious, I absolutely loved it from the very first moment. It was technically amazing, gorgeous, terrifying, and really, really fun. I've shared these memories on DoomWorld.com before, so apologies and recreated all rounds, but there are three that truly stand out. One, I can vividly remember just starting out the window at the top of the first M1M1 staircase. Something about the montane sky and shadow plane echoed with melancholy beauty. And the fact that you could get out there re added greatly to the mystic. Two, for an embarrassing amount of time, I was legitimately frightened by M1M7 size and didn't realize that there were enemies on top of the small race area in the middle of the map. <laughs> I could hear the alert noises of the monsters, but I had no idea where they were and scared the crap out of me. <laughs> and three, I didn't have dial-up internet at the time, just like a lot of people back in the 90s. So in order to glean info about citrus and shortcuts, I would superstitiously browse the printed strategy guides. Oh, I love strategy guides. I need to do a new, uh, no, a new one for the next map I release at various bookstores and scribble down notes. I definitely recall having to read about the way to get to the secret level in PC3 and having to go back at least twice to accurately recall <laughs> IDSPESPOPD. Try to pronounce that if you are not an English native speaker. So yeah, uh, I'm not going to read the entire interview because I'm going to die. <laughs> but this interview is fucking awesome. Lutz is a legend. You guys should f definitely check out Corruptor Sister. It's an awesome what I highly recommend it. I mean, just look at these screenshots. Look at this. This is beautiful. Who doesn't love this? This is just great. Really love this kind of style. The whole unreal vibe to it. The waterfalls. The, like... Blue haze, the cyan water, the darkness, the dampness, the wetness. It's just lovely. One of the best watts of the year for sure. So, that finishes the what corner section. Afterwards, it's the new stuff on Duo, Science Friday 14, 2022. Unfortunately, this version is quite outdated because it was supposed to come out in like June, May. So it's missing the June and July releases, but hopefully that won't happen in the next issue. This new stuff on Doom World is pretty much a little section of every single what that has been released on Doom World on a thread and has a proper download. So as you can see, Doom World is very, very busy. There's like a hundred new watts each month. It's insane. It's really awesome. So the nimble news to mentionations is a little is the corner of Lady Miss Dragon, which she plays uh, all the words she can, gives them some little uh, comments, and a rating system. It's like the old news to chronicles for the old veterans out there. And it's pretty awesome. It's a good way to find quick words and play some of them. She always does some really nice screenshots too. She writes a lot, that's for sure, it's amazing. So, the Doom Community Art Gallery. This was an idea started by Nico Senos. We actually didn't think it was going to fly that that well, but it turns out a lot of people wanted to share their art. And here it is, it's pretty freaking awesome. I love watching the art each day. We have art by Morbite, by Texashi, by Morbite over here. It's pretty awesome, you can check out some of the stuff over here. This little comic that's by Johnny Quilty, shout out to him. It's pretty awesome. The, the style and uh, pencil-like 
which is on Avatar. And it's really cool. It's a little section. It's one of those things that really fill my heart with sweet warm. <laughs> Look at this one. <laughs> That's awesome. Really cool stuff. And to end the issue, we have the Pictures Gallery, which is a collection of some of the best pictures shared on the Doom War Cred, where you can find stuff like this shit, like, what the hell, Dan Lex? What, the, what is this? What is this? How is this possible? What the hell is this? It reminds me of the... Um, that like a uh, thing in Tony Hawk Pro Skater. <laughs> it's just awesome. By the way, this is going to be for the Brutalist map we are doing on the Was in Master Collection, our series of Was in May Watts. And Dan Lex is making some really awesome stuff alongside uh, our other mappers like Infront and uh, Doom Dude and uh, Format and me. Although I'm not going to be nowhere near as close as this. This is too cool. And you can check out some of the really awesome screenshots here. It's a good way to find out about what the community is doing, the stuff they're working on. Like, look at this really cool uh, shot by Gaia. I love this one by Bree. As usual, very Plutonia-esque, but it also has a little bit of Unreal to it. So yeah, that's the kind of stuff I really like. Totally not in front 95. Hey man, what's up? Welcome. A little bit late. I'm almost going to finish. <clears throat> I actually wanted to read a little bit more, but I'm I'm getting mute. And then next to Swoil stuff. Yes, he does. It's really damn fucking epic. The stuff he does is insane. Bree is also becoming one of my recently discovered mappers. I really love his work. And Big of Ely, of course, one of my favorite mappers of all time. We have a really cool uh, screenshot from Misty. The work she's doing on a very awesome uh, heretic one. And a cool shot by Cannibal, another one of my favorite uh, what makers. So, <coughs> this pretty much ends the very first issue. Well, the very first live issue, that is. Issue number 18. Uh, let's see. Of the Doom Master Wall scene on July 2022. Also, our anniversary issue. Wow, we really did a lot of stuff. This was pretty awesome. I really need to take some <laughs> some practice to avoid getting all this uh, troll pain next time. But definitely. You guys should really go read this issue if you haven't. It's full of great stuff. It's fantastic. I love that. It's always a joy to see the work once it is finished. I would absolutely love if we had some way to have physical print. Sadly, because the team lives in different countries and I live in a third world country, printing is pretty... It's a, probably not a realistic option. But I actually encourage you guys to print your own issues at home. You can do it pretty much with a regular printer. Use some stitches or just a... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you can do it. If not, you could probably go to a professional printer, maybe in your city or town, and they could probably do some really great stuff with this. It's letter size. No, it's Wait, actually, I think it's A4 size, so it's not that big. Well, it, it is big. <laughs> it's pretty damn awesome. Thanks, everyone. So I think I'm going to leave it here. I actually had a lot of fun. Thanks to all you guys for joining in. It was pretty awesome. We learned a lot. We did a lot. And uh, this is also the first time I do a live stream. Also the first time I read this much out loud. Probably going to go die on the bed. <laughs> Uh, if you guys would love to have uh, another stream like this when the next issue drops, just tell me. I think I'd love to. It was pretty damn fun. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Uh, by the way, uh, how's my English, my audio? I was a bit, I'm, I'm a bit nervous because I'm not really used to speaking in English, much less reading out loud. So hopefully you guys understand me well enough. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thanks, mate. Really feels nice. How how long have we been streaming by now? I think it's two hours already. Damn. It's not bad for a first time. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Millie, Mario. That, that makes me flush. Oh, yeah, for sure. I am definitely want to do that. There's actually going to be some more events for the celebration of the anniversary. I was thinking of doing a dead match or capture the flag, but we'll see because time is always a little bit tight. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I need to I need to find one of those pop things you put on the microphone so it doesn't sound so bad when I spit or say stuff like that. <laughs> so, thank you guys. I'll see you in the next one. Uh, thanks for joining in today. I think I'll be leaving here for now. It was great. Absolutely great work to all the WASIN members, all the team. I love you guys, so we'll see you in the next stream, if there is one. <laughs> so, thanks, mate. Sounds great. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.